Hi, it's David, and this video is for the Leader Coach Catalyst. This isn't just for people who are leading a revolution, what I'm sharing today. It's really for anyone, anytime. It was over 25 years ago that I watched somebody powerful, wealthy, and quite famous melt down right before my eyes. And it took me probably another 10 years to be able to understand and explain it so that it would be valuable to you. It was the 1990s, and I had just spent a week at a meditation retreat in upstate New York. I was beyond blissful. I was smiling pretty much constantly, ease, easily flowing wherever I walked. I was taking those deep belly breaths that you take as you're falling asleep or as you're really relaxed and satisfied when I arrived at Newark Airport to catch my flight back to Chicago. And within two minutes of my arrival and walking into the airport, the power went out in the entire airport which meant everything changed immediately. The, you couldn't check in. You couldn't check your bags. If a flight had arrived, it couldn't come to the gate and, and deplane because the jet bridges didn't work. You couldn't pick up your luggage if you had arrived because the, the turnstiles and the belts stopped working. The lights went out. Fortunately, there were lots of windows at Newark so we could still see with the sunlight. The air conditioning went out so the, the windows started to steam up. All the restaurants that use electricity shut down. There, it, it just came to an entire stop. What you would think of as a normal active airport, nothing was working. So people immediately headed to the phone banks. This was before cell phones. So we all headed to the phone banks to call whoever we needed to talk to to let them know of the change. And by the time I reached the line, I wasn't in so much of a hurry. I was probably the 20th person in the line behind the phone I was waiting for along these banks. So there were just rows and rows of people all waiting, mostly impatiently, um, to get to the phones. By the time I reached the front, I was still pretty chill, feeling the good vibes of all of that, meditating. Um, but the person next to me was not having such a good day. I didn't recognize at first who he was, but he was screaming, and I'm not exaggerating, screaming into the phone at whoever was on the other side. But as I couldn't help but notice a screaming man next to me. I mean, you know, those phone banks are so close. I could have put my arm around him. We were that close. I recognized that it's actually a person that was quite well known at the time. It was an actor from Saturday Night Live. And whoever he was talking to, I surmised, you know, I was just wanting to make my call, but nobody could not listen to this guy. Um, I, I surmised it was somebody who, was, who worked for him, I think in LA, and he was berating them so mad at them because the power was out in Newark and that he was going to miss some really important engagement that he was headed to. And he was mad at them and everybody else that this was happening to him. So look, this is a, a guy who could have walked down the street just about anywhere, at least in the US, and been recognized in, in, a, in a positive way. I'm sure he could have walked into any restaurant and even if it was completely full, he probably would have gotten a table. He could go to a bank, get loans. He could call um, if there was a, a movie part that he wanted to be considered for. He could at least get considered. He'd get, he'd get a, a return phone call for that. So he was well known and powerful. But in that moment, not only was the airport without power, his power had gone to absolute zero. And you know, even little old me, I'm sure I had more power than he did at that moment. So. The, the thing to know, though, was all of this, had he known what I'm going to share with you today and applied it, it, it was all completely preventable for him. So what I'd like to share with you is something that the more stress you're in, the worse the conditions are for you, the more powerful or more useful, let's say, it will become. The more powerful you will become. And the less you know about this, the less you understand about this, the more likely it is that your messy and destructive behaviors just like he was showing his messy and destructive behaviors, they're more likely to show up for you or for whoever it is in a stressful situation that doesn't know what I'm about to share. So if you're wanting to have more power, then let's go. But before we begin, I just want to help you make this as real as possible. So recall or become aware of something that's happening in your life, preferably right now, that feels highly stressful to you, where you're not, you're not able to 
and to behave the way you normally would when you're at your best. You're not thinking the best. Maybe you're swirling. Maybe you're stuck in some thoughts. Maybe you're angry at other people or beating up on yourself. Um, you just know you're not showing up at your very best. And it may be showing up in behaviors and thoughts. And once you've got that, even pause the video if you can't think of anything immediately so that you can find something. Because if you can look through what I'm about to share with you or look at it through the lens of what's happening to you right now, not only will it make more sense, but you'll be able to have more traction when you go to apply it. So once you have something real like that happening to you right now in mind, let's go. The simple phrase that describes what I'm going to share with you is, as goes your presence, so goes your power. So let me just explain this simple framework for you to help you start to understand how you can help yourself even right now in this situation where you're feeling stressed and maybe not showing up at your best. First, we've got an x-axis and a y-axis. So let me just define them for you. Um, this is sort of like we're defining, doing our best to define time and space. To the left, we have the past. To the right, we have the future. And here in the middle, I'll use the word now to represent the present. And then on this other, the y-axis, we have space. So there's away and there's there, things that are not here. And then we have here. And at this center point, at this intersection between the x and the y-axis, we have here and now. And I've been working with people to build their presence, their leadership presence, for at least 15 years. And one of the simplest ways I help them understand what is presence, because it's so hard to define, it's one of those you'll know it when you see it kind of things, is just to always seek out the here and the now. And when you do that, this, this intersection of the here and the now on this particular uh, model is what I would call the bullseye. This is where you have the maximum presence. But also, it's where you have the maximum power. Because there's a strong correlation between your ability to be present here and now and your power, your capacity to do things. Not to dominate people, not to abuse people. I'm talking about the power to do the good things that you want to do in the world. And no matter what happens, anytime you go in any direction away from this power circle, you're actually losing power. And I'll just describe that as P negative. You're, you're losing, you're, you're reducing your power. You're also losing your awareness. So it's um, A minus. Your awareness, your, your, your conscious awareness of what's going on is reduced. So not only as you move in this direction, which is what was happening to our friend on the phone, he was worried about the future, super angry about something in the future, he was mad about the past, you know, even though it was completely out of his control and definitely out of the control of the person in L.A. who he was talking to, he was still grinding on that. He was also not where we were. He was not here with the rest of us. He was away, wanting to be somewhere else, thinking about a, a, a bunch of other stuff. So he had gone in all directions, really. He was not in the here and now. He was not in the, the you know, bullseye where the power is. He was not only losing all of his power, but he wasn't even aware of it. So when we lose our power and our awareness at the same time, which is what happens when we go in any of these directions, or here or here, you lose your power, your presence, and you don't even know it. So that's one of the challenges. So pay attention to what your specific situation is, and is there any relationship between what I'm describing here and what you are experiencing? Where would you place yourself on this little map of power or a presence and with what what is it if you're not here what is it that's pulling you in different directions because the goal if you want to be your most productive your most powerful is to be at this place of here and now so um, the other thing to know about your about being here is the closer you are here to this intersection of here and now um, it your presence becomes like a talent multiplier. Whatever your abilities are, become more concentrated, more focused. Um, you are able to be more effective. Your, your skill actually rises because you're, you're being able to bring it into such focus. Or when you're out here, um, it's like the, 
the power divider. Or maybe it's you're you know, multiplying by a negative number. Anyway, it, it goes to either zero or less than zero. Your power, your, your skill, your capacity to do things that you actually are capable of doing diminishes or maybe completely disappears. Again, that's what was happening to the guy next to me. And I'm not trying to knock on him. He was having a bad day for whatever reason. But we all are capable of doing something like him. And so I want, this is not about him anymore. This is really about where are you in that stressful situation on this map? You know, the, the question I get asked a lot when I'm um, working with people who are wanting to, leader coach catalysts, wanting to make bigger contributions is, you know, fill in the blank. How can I build more presence, power, influence, trust, safety, confidence, clarity, calm, connection, satisfaction, or just impact. All of those things are, how do you build them? Spend your time here. Um, learn how to spend your time here. Um, this is what I found to be, having worked with people for so long on this topic of how do I have the greatest impact, is the simplest way to, to describe it. Um, and I, I hope that this description helps you um, think about it as, you, as you're in your situation right now. But let me share with you just a little bit more. Well, I think this can be serious work and valuable for you. I also don't want to take myself and what I'm sharing with you too seriously. There's an old saying by George Box. He used to say, all models are wrong, but some are useful. So how that applies to this or really anything I'm going to share with you, all models are wrong. Let's be serious. Life is way too complex for us to fool ourselves to believe or for me to fool myself to believe that this Two by two grid that I created over the years is somehow able to explain the complexity of all life. All models are wrong, but some are useful. I find under high stress and in situations that leaders, coach, leader, coach catalysts find themselves in, this is really useful. And I've shared it with thousands of people who have told me so, who put it to use and, and in the moment been able to increase their, their presence, their power, their their confidence, all the things that make them more successful so that they can have an impact. All models are wrong, but some are useful. And so with that, you know, there may be some exceptions to what I described here. And I'd like to note at least two that I think are important to be aware of. The first exception is that you, um, when you're moving from here and now, we need to look at this slightly differently. So what I suggested was, you may think any time that you're thinking about the future, based on the way I explained it, any time you're thinking about the future or the past or oh, not something that's here, you may be losing presence and power, and, and that's not what I'm saying. Um, there are, if you can, from the here and now, move to any of these places, actually it's a really powerful and valuable thing to do. So I can keep myself conscious and aware, be in the here and now, and think about the future, and think and, and, and vision where we're headed, create a strategy and a plan for how to get there. From the here and now, thinking about the future in that way, super powerful. From the here and now, I can think about the past, learn from what happened, um, draw from other past experiences that may not even be related to this particular situation where, again, they happened before and we can draw knowledge or learning from them. That's super powerful. We can go away to other, from the present, from the here and now, we can think about this other place, this meeting that we need to have in another location, not here and now, all sorts of things away from us that um, can be valuable uh, to us moving forward as long as we do it from the here and now. So the point is not anytime you move away from the here and now, you're losing your power. It's when you do it and you're not aware of it, when you're not conscious of it. The second exception is then to make sure that you are valuing your resting brain or your wandering mind. And, you know, the more we learn about how the brain works, um, even recently, we understand that there are times when, you know, even the most accomplished, focused of people usually only have three or four hours of concentrated focus a day that they can do. Um, and so you can't just 24-7. I'm not suggesting that 24-7 you always need to be in the here and now, otherwise you're somehow failing yourself and failing the world. Value the fact that your mind um, can wander and, you know, have you ever set a problem aside or reached the end point of, well, I can't go any further right now and walked away? Well, you know, even measuring what happens in your brain, your brain continues to work, sometimes even becomes more active when you're not trying to solve the problem or you're not trying to focus on the thing. And it keeps working. It keeps working. And then sometimes you may have experience where you walk away from something where you're stuck. 
you walk away consciously because you ain't got nothing left. Um, you let your mind rest, even though it's not resting the way we might think. And uh, you come back and there's a greater solution. I consciously use that. And that's, you know, so you can, you can value and, and leverage the resting mind or the, uh, you know, the, or the resting brain, the wandering mind um, to get more out of it. I will consciously um, open up questions that I don't know the answers to that might be really hard and then set them aside on purpose and walk away for an hour or a day or a longer period of time. And whenever I come back to it, maybe repeatedly, um, each time I come back to it, my brain is somehow helping me make more progress. So it's not to say that you always have to be in the here and now to get the most from yourself. But again, I would suggest, you know, if you're going to take advantage of the resting, resting brain or the wandering mind, again, do it consciously. Simply daydreaming all the time probably is going to be t taking you away to some other place that's not as powerful. Doing it consciously can, can give you great leverage. So with that, I'd just like to help you think about um, knowing what you know now. Let's go back to your specific situation and the places that you see yourself going soon and just ask some now what questions. So I would ask three questions to help you leverage this starting now and into the future. The first question is, um, ask yourself, what's pulling my attention, unconsciously pulling my attention to somewhere other than the here and now? Where am I drifting off to in a way that's not, I know it's not productive? And just notice, what is it that's calling my attention away from the here and now and probably reducing my presence? Think about it, if you're ever with a person who's not there in the here and now with you, you don't experience them as having leadership presence. You don't experience them as powerful. You don't experience them as somebody you want to engage with or, or um, uh, join with or, or follow um, or join a team with. It's just they don't draw you in. So um, what's pulling your attention away? Because not only are you going to notice it, but people around you are going to notice it. That's question one. Question two then is how can you recognize it? What will tell you what What's happening to you? Is it that you notice your mind racing, that you notice your, your mood is getting cranky, you're, you're just feeling less powerful, that you're being very critical of other people? Whatever it is, what, what can you recognize that will tell you, whoops, I've unconsciously gone away? And then the third question is, what do you already know? What's already in your repertoire of moves that can help you when you notice that you've been pulled away that you can bring yourself back with? If you can answer, just begin to answer those three questions, you're going to start to build your presence. You're going to sport, spend more time here. You'll build your power and confidence and clarity of mind and your impact. All those things that I mentioned before start to grow because you're teaching yourself how to spend more time consciously in the here and now. So with that, I hope that you can find ways to immediately put this into action for yourself because that's how you learn the most quickly. And as you do, I would love to hear from you. How did this video land with you? What was useful? What were the ideas that don't make sense that you have questions about? Or even how I'm sharing this. How's the format of this working for you? My whole desire behind this is to share with you in the most valuable way to you um, what I've learned over the past 26 years of doing this work so that you can run with it in case we never even get to meet. So please share your feedback with me, and I can't wait to hear from you, and I'll see you in the next video. Thanks.